Danielle with Bernie and of Naperville. And today I've been asked by the team over at Suzy Quilts to simplify the sewing machine presser foot. So I bet some of you out there, you know who you are, you're probably just using the foot that came with your machine and you've probably been doing a fantastic job. But maybe you've been struggling a little bit or maybe you wanna try a new project that requires changing the foot. Well, never fear, there are a lot of presser feet out there to tempt you, but there's also some tried and true ones, no matter what kind of segment of sewing that you're wanting to use. And that's where we come in to kind of help you figure out what the best foot to use or not use is. And that is much easier than you think if you just have a look and see what they do. I'm sure that it's no secret that I am a Bernina lover and that the team over at Suzy Quilt sews on Berninas, but don't forget, your brand, your machine, there are all kinds of other feet available for those machines as well. So hopefully you take the tips and the information from this video and you can apply it to your brand and maybe even reach out to your local haven where you get your supplies and your information for their advice on certain types of feet for your project. So let's have a look at two of our favorites. Patchwork foot number 37. This is the tried and true foot that I've been using for over 20 years. It is a quarter of an inch exactly to the right of the needle and exactly to the left of the needle. That's right. No need to move your needle position to the right or the left. So you place this on the machine and Bernina feet, we kind of call them one hand tastic because we don't have to use a screwdriver or anything to change them out. So we just put that foot right on the machine and we can butt our fabric right up to the edge of this foot. And when I can just see one little whisker poking out from that foot, that's right at the quarter inch line. It also lines up with the quarter inch mark on the machine. So the quarter inch mark is kind of down the middle of the right feed dog. And then there's a little notch right on the needle plate to show me exactly that piece as well. And this is what I use when I'm doing quick piecing or short seams. I also use this when I'm doing half square triangles because what I do when I make my half square triangles is I cut the square, I draw the line down the middle from corner to corner, and then I take my presser foot and line the edge of my presser foot, my, num my patchwork foot, right up against that line and so, and I can do it on either side of this foot because it's exactly the same distance on either side. And this is a great way for those of you that are afraid of sewing with bias because you keep your square intact and it helps with that stretchiness and everything. And if you, I know what you're thinking, or I think I know what you're thinking, <laughs> that wouldn't it be nice if there was a guide? Well, there's also external guides that you can use. I mean, on these presser feet, there's a little screw in the back of the foot that allows you to screw on different kinds of guides. There's a left guide and a right guide set with rulers on them. There is a simple little guide that may or may not have come with your machine that screws in there and also there are two screws on your Bernina where you can actually screw an external guide down that builds like a little wall up against the foot so that you can't like overshoot your seam allowance. Now that is all fine and dandy, but maybe you would like the guide built into the foot. Well, that is where our patchwork foot number 57 with guide comes into play. Now this foot is really nice for those long seams, like maybe your strip piecing, strip piecing, you know, little seams that then ultimately will be pressed and then segmented and chopped into other pieces. Well, this one is perfect because sometimes when I go to do a long seam, I kind of like space out after a while or I, you know, the attention span wanes. So this one kind of keeps you honest when you're doing those long seams. What's next after you've made your quilt top and you've got those perfect pieces that you did with your quarter inch foot? Well, you might need to quilt them together. And logically, the next step is to do some walking foot quilting. Now that is where you can either use a straight line or some of the stitches on our machines that are great, like the running zigzag or the serpentine stitch, really allow it to be used with the walking foot very nicely. Now a walking foot is a separate foot that attaches to the machine. 
once again with a Bernina, one hand tastic and no screwdriver necessary, uh, where you can have three different soles, an open toe, closed toe, or a sole with a little guide down the middle that helps with edge stitching or sewing on a binding. So walking feet are used anytime there is maybe multiple layers or bulk. So with a quilt, there's your backing, your batting, and your top that you have to kind of feed evenly. So on the walking foot, on the bottom of the foot, there are these little rubber grippers and this little fork attaches to the screw that holds the needle in. And as the needle goes up and down, it moves those little rubber grippies so that it moves the fabric through the machine from the top evenly with the bottom. Well, maybe straight lines aren't your jam and you're just somebody who marches to the beat of a different drummer. Maybe you are fantastic at moving that fabric under the needle, doodling, creating your own background fills, or at least giving it a try. And that might mean that free motion is your technique of choice. With that in mind, you need a foot that can allow you to drop your feed dogs and move the fabric around while still steadying the fabric so that you can make your cute little worms, loop-de-loops, stars, whatever. Well, I have picked out two. And the first one is, it's got a very fancy name, everyone. It's called the darning foot. Because back in the olden days, we used to darn our clothing or our items or our socks or whatever needed to be mending with a darning foot. And these days, we don't really do a lot of darning, darn it. But this one is perfect to get you started with free motion quilting. Now this one doesn't have any stitch regulation in it or anything, so it's like patting your belly and rubbing your head. The faster you move your hands, well, the longer your stitches are gonna be. And the slower you move your hands and the faster you move your foot, the tinier the stitches are gonna be. So slow and steady wins the race, everyone. Now I mentioned stitch regulation. Well, on our Berninas, there is a foot that you can plug into the machine that shines a little infrared light down onto the material. And then it's like a mouse. You know how like that infrared light on your mouse, first the arrow's here, and then it's over there. Well, this situation lets you move fast and then the machine speeds up to keep those stitches even. You slow down and it's gonna go slower. So the motor is tied into that little infrared mouse, but we're gonna use that on a different day. Another foot that I thought you might really like is something with open toe. Now the open toe foot, free motion open toe foot number 73 from Bernina is really open. So you can see exactly where that's needle, that needle is going, especially if you are trying to follow a line on something because some of us aren't so good at doodling straight out of the gate with this. We might need a little helper like, you know, drawing something on there with your water soluble marking pen and then following the line. Now, so you've become a quilt expert now and you're ready to move on to something else. Well, naturally, we find a lot of our students love to migrate to bags after they've made a few quilts. Bags are great and they're even better when they have a zipper in them. So you have like little compartments and things like that. Well, when you're sewing in a zipper, you sometimes need a foot that allows you to get really close to those zipper teeth. And Bernina has your back there. There are zipper feet that are just a standard zipper foot that comes with most of the machines. And then there are even zipper feet with a guide on them. So you can sew exactly the right amount of space away if you're doing a centered zipper like the like a basic zipper in a dress or a flap zipper like in the side of a skirt or pencil skirt or something like that. Um, and also the zipper with a guide on it is also non-stick coated. So I bet you never thought that your next project might be a vinyl zippy bag or a zippy pouch, but you can do this easily with the right foot. Now, warning, fair warning, fair warning. If you are using a zipper foot, it does require that you move your needle position. And sometimes you get a little variation in between where you can move it over like three notches to the right, up to five notches to the right, or three notches to the left, up to five notches to the left. If you have a bag, you might need a quilted jacket to go with it or something with a buttonhole. And there are about three or four different buttonhole feet, but the tried and true one that we're all using these days is the automatic buttonhole foot 
3A. And with this one, I can just measure my button on screen. Then I can just make the buttonhole, make sure it looks good. And then after that, they're all made the same way. Now there are automatic buttonhole feet for other types of brands. And some of them you stick the button in the buttonhole foot and it'll make it based on the size of the button that's in the foot. Those are perfectly fine. And then there might be some of the situations where your surface is really lumpy or it's just in a precarious area. And then there's also manual buttonhole feet. But finally, you might want a manual buttonhole foot for a scarf where you have to make a long buttonhole and then you wrap the scarf around you and you tuck the end through that hole. I think you've seen those before. Well, well, in that case, you're gonna have to make one super long manual buttonhole. If you need the confidence of having a foot that you can hold everything down and make it super flat, there are also clear feet and the clear feet have a little red line horizontally to tell you where the needle's gonna start and a red line in the middle of the foot so you can kind of make sure that you line things up just so. So those are my two recommendations and these are perfect, like I said, for applique or other embellishments like our cute little postcards that we stitched. Well, it's time to finish your project. Whether it's another quilt, aren't you excited that you finished another quilt? Or it's a quilted jacket, or it's a pot holder, or a placemat, whatever. It's time to add the binding. And you can do a binding where you sew the binding around the quilt, you wrap it around to the back, and you stitch it by hand. That is actually a beautiful and loved way to complete a binding. But some of the time you've got a lot of stuff to do and little time to do it in, and you might wanna to strive to be able to sew your bindings on, sew them onto the quilt, wrap them around, and then sew them down again by machine. Well, we have a lot of choices for you. Now, one of the methods that I'm more comfortable with is using a walking foot with that central guide. So I will sew my bindings to the back of the quilt, then I bring them around to the front, and then I use that guide and butt my folded edge of my binding right up to the center part of that guide and move my needle position, usually to the right, about three clicks, and I get a very lovely top stitch binding. Now, if you want something that's gonna kind of hold that binding flap down for you, you could try what a foot that was initially designed to do flat fell seams. What are those? Who cares? It doesn't matter because we're not using it for this purpose. We are repurposing a foot, number 71. It's an eight millimeter flat fell hem foot, but it does bindings in a very lovely way. So you would cut your binding two and a quarter inches wide, connect your strips together with a mitered method, fold it in half, and then stitch the binding to the back side of your work, bring it around to the front, and then tuck that little flap of that binding right in the foot and top stitch. Now, I said you cut it two and a quarter inches, and usually you're gonna use the side of this number 71 foot as your seam allowance, and then you're gonna move your needle position if you need to one click to the right or the left because this foot has limited space for your needle but this foot is just really nice and a lot of people like it it's like getting training wheels on a binding foot <laughs> well i hope that you found this information valuable and i hope it took a little bit of fear out of feet if you want to know more about bernina you want to have some fun tutorials you want to learn to quilt learn to embroider just kind of see what you know we do here at Bernina of Naperville, well please check us out as well. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and Susie and myself would really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe. All right, roll up those sleeves, put on some new feet, and start sewing.